Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's clean and simple card making video. Today I'm going to do some smushing and stamping and some other bits and bobs using these stamps. I don't think I've used these before, they look like they've never come out of their packaging so that's partly why I want to use them today and the other part is that I really just like the patterns. I've got some mixed media paper here, which will allow me to use plenty of water without it falling apart. So I've got those four on there. Pick them up with a door. Treat this with anti-static powder, also known as talcum powder, but you can use cornstarch or corn flour. And I'll stamp these with embossing ink. And I'll give them a really good press down with my air hockey press tool and I'll do that again. I can't see the impression really, I can a little bit so I'm, I'm just hoping that's worked. You never know with new stamps how well they're going to work first time. And I've got Paper Mania Super Fine Silver Embossing Powder here which is really good for picking up the tiny little details. And that's come out really well, they've stamped beautifully. They're silicone stamps, which means they don't always stamp brilliantly with water-based inks, but with oil-based inks or sticky embossing inks, they normally work really well. All right, I'm gonna heat that with my heat tool. So I'm really pleased with that, that has come out beautifully. So now that has cooled and set, it's time to do some smushing. I've got some blues here. I think blues and purples go really nicely together. So this is Stormy Sky. It's a kind of pale indigo. It's got a bit of a violet tone to it. Add some water to turn it into a paint and then pick it up with my smusher and smush it all over. The embossing will resist the water, the ink and you'll get some nice pooling effects between the embossing. I'm going to cover the whole thing just in case I want to use some of this for something else. Now I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer. I use my hairdryer for drying because it's not hot enough to remelt embossing powder. Now for some chip sapphire. This is a lovely purpley blue or bluey violet. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to chop this down, save that for later. There's a little strip there that might come in handy. And then cut this into four bits. So I've picked some basic shape dies. I've got a star, circle, hexagons and a heart. And I'm going to die cut from these. So there are my shapes and I've also cut some banners using these dies and I've got four stitched rectangle panels made from linen texture cardstock that are going to go on some linen texture card blanks. So I'm thinking having this, I like this, with some kind of banner behind. Something like that for those three and then this one with the multiple hexagons, maybe having the hexagons we could go landscape maybe for this one and have the banner somewhere with the hexagons bouncing around. I've got five hexagons, I might not need all five. Three might be enough, yeah, something like that. But before I stick anything down, I want to do a little bit of texture behind my focal point. So I was thinking to bring in a bit of contrast, I would use the complementary colour to Chipped Sapphire. Chipped Sapphire is a bluey violet and the colour opposite that on the colour wheel is orange yellow. And these are the Distress Oxides I have in orange yellow. I've got Wild Honey, Scattered Straw, Antique Linen, I think falls under that as well. But I just want a tiny little bit of something. 
I'm thinking wild honey might be a bit too attention grabbing. So I'm gonna go scattered straw. So I have this grungy stamp, which is about the right size, I think, but I'm not gonna put the ink straight from the ink pad onto the stamp. I'm going to use a sponge dauber to apply some ink in a kind of random pattern way. Get that on there. I'm going to put my head right over, so I'll cut that bit out. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to add a bit of glue to the back of this banner and use my T-square ruler to help me get it straight on there. I've put some thin foam squares on the back of this and now I can position my star. I think I might shuffle it over to the right a little bit so it sits more centrally on this blob and just adds a little bit of interest having things offset. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to do the same thing to all the others. So I'll pop you on fast forward so you can watch the process. So there we have our cards, really happy with those. I think I might want a little bit more yellow around the bottom part of this circle, but I'm gonna leave it for now because I will probably add some form of dot or drop at the end, and I might be able to sort that then. Now for some sentiments. So I've chosen some stamps that have coordinating dies and I've die cut a little jig for myself and I've put the stamps in and lined them up how I want them with a little bit of space all the way around. Now I can pick those up and without moving the jig, I can put the die cuts back into the little holes and when I stamp them, they should stamp in exactly the right place. I'm gonna stamp these in stays on black ink. I want to use black to help it stand out and stays on is good for silicon stamps, which is what these are. So I can keep this jig with my stamp set. So I put a little bit of PVA on my mat, spread it out, and now I can dip my sentiments in there and pop them in the appropriate place. So I've got hope all your birthday wishes come true on the star. Wishes and stars go together, don't they? The world is a better place with you in it. I like this one. I think that goes well with the heart. Wishing you the biggest slice of happy today. I think that works well on this arrangement of hexagons. So I've popped it in the middle of the hexagon arrangement, but I've made sure to have this bit of hexagon poking out the bottom so that it is a complete shape. And I've also made sure to have the top of this slightly above, not in line with the top of this. It just adds a bit of interest. And then we have, hope your birthday is just as amazing as you are, centralized over the circle, which is centralized over the banner, which is centralized on the card. So that one's very central. I've mounted all of these onto a card blank each. But I'm still thinking I want a tad more of this yellow. So all I'm doing on this is adding a little bit of yellow to the corner and using my finger to press it down. I probably added too much now, but hey ho, such is life. Now it's time for the obligatory Nouveau drops. I've got some silver ones here. These are a charity shop find. I think it cost me a pound. Then we have four cards made with a bit of 
heat embossing, a bit of smushing, a bit of stamping, a bit of die cutting and some Nouveau dropping. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas of things that you can do with similar items that you already own. If it has, please do let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all of those things and I'll see you back here very soon for my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.